Orioles are incredible birds that you can find in the United States, and they're known for their bright coloration and flute-like vocalizations. So I'm gonna tell you what species you can find here, and also how to identify them, and we're gonna play some of their vocalizations too. So I split this up into three categories. Orioles that are widespread, they have the largest range, they're the most common birds you're probably gonna run into. Then localized Orioles, so they live in the US but they're in more specific places. And then also vagrant birds, so rare species that might show up in different parts of the United States. So let's get into it with our most widespread Oriole species. And this is the one I hear about the most, and I think it's the bird people think about when they hear the word Oriole. It is the Baltimore Oriole. They're mostly found in the eastern and central United States, but also in southern Canada in the summer, and they winter in Central America and northern South America. So the males are bright orange with a black head and back and white wing bars. Females are a little bit more yellow-orange with a grayer head and have duller wings. And with a lot of these species, the immature birds look more similar to the females. They have more muted colors, but they might show some characteristics of the males too. So keep in mind that if they don't quite fit a certain adult category, it might be one of the immature birds. And as far as where you can find Baltimore Orioles, they really like deciduous forests, edge habitat, kind of some more park and suburban areas with a lot of trees, and they will come to backyard bird feeders. So this is one that you can definitely attract to your yard, and we'll talk about how to attract Orioles near the end of the video. Their vocalization is kind of similar to the American Robin. It's really clear, rich whistles, but it might sound a little more musical than the Robin. And Orioles have a, a certain tone to their vocalizations. And somebody said this the other day and it stuck with me that when your friend calls you, you identify that it's a certain person, not by what they're saying, but by what their voice sounds like. And that's kind of true with Orioles. They make a lot of different vocalizations, but that tone is normally a giveaway. And in addition to the flute-like vocalizations, a lot of these Orioles will also make chattering noises. Next up, we have number two, the Orchard Oriole. And this one is really cool because the males are actually more of like a cider stained color. So they're a little darker, more of like a brown than you would see in the Baltimore Oriole. But they're found in the Eastern and Central United States and then they winter in Central America. So as I mentioned, the males are kind of that chestnut brown with a black head and back. And then females are more yellow green and they have some light wing bars. And there is some confusion with young orchard orioles. People will confuse them for more rare species that we'll get to in a little bit. The orchard oriole, I feel like you can find them in more open spaces. So they really like edge habitats where if you have like an open field and then a forest edge, but also like around farmlands and of course orchards. And they like areas with kind of scattered trees and they will occasionally come to feeder setups as well. Their vocalization is a little bit similar to the Baltimore, but it's a little more jumbled and a little more raspy. Next up, we have number three, the Bullocks Oriole. And this one is mostly found in the Western United States, and then they winter in Mexico and Central America. So males have an orange body with a black crown and eye line, and they have a large white wing patch. Females are more yellow orange with a grayish back, and they have a wing patch, but it's a little bit smaller. And they like to be in open woodlands, prairies, orchards, and they will sometimes come to feeders as well. Their vocalization is a little more variable and it has a lot of rasp to it. Now let's move on to our more localized Orioles. So these three are the most common that you'll probably encounter. These live in more specific habitats. So with number four, we have the Scots Oriole. They can be found in the southwestern United States in desert and mountain habitats. The males have a black head and back with a bright lemon yellow body. Females are a little more olive yellow and they have dusky wings. And I've seen these in the southwestern US and they are absolutely gorgeous. They look a little bit different than any of the other Orioles we've talked about. And their song is absolutely beautiful. Probably one of the top five in the United States. And it's a very sweet whistle that is slow and melodic. Next up, we have another southwestern species, the hooded oriole. 
and they especially like being around palm trees, which is interesting. But adult males are bright orange to yellow orange with a black bib and face. And the females are more yellow green and they don't actually have that black bib. But this is one of the ones that will confuse a lot of people. They will see immature male orchard orioles with kind of the greenish color and the black bib here. And they'll think that they have a hooded oriole. So around spring every year, we get a bunch of people posting, oh, do I have a rare hooded oriole in my yard? And normally it is just an immature male orchard oriole. So if you think you have the rare hooded, make sure to check that it's not just an orchard oriole. Definitely check your range with that. But hooded does show up as a vagrant sometimes. So it's a good one to look out for. Hooded will have a longer, thinner, more curved bill, larger size overall, and a longer tail. So kind of the builds of the birds are very different and definitely take range into consideration. As far as adults, they look completely different, but when you get the immatures, that's when it gets a little bit confusing. And the song of the hooded is some nasal complex chattering, as well as some whistles. Next up, we have the beautiful Altamir Oriole. And this is a South Texas specialty species. And they're a little bit larger. And they're a really beautiful species that brightens up South Texas. And males and females as adults look similar. So they're bright orange yellow with a black face and bib. And one of the identifying features is on the wing. Some of that orange color will go into the wing patch. So they won't have like a true two white wing bars. There's some white on the wing, but they'll have that orange that goes into it. And that's one way you can differentiate them from other species such as hooded. And they'll come to feeding stations, they'll be around visitor centers, but they'll also kind of just be um, in the vegetation in, in different areas. So they're a really unique species, but one that you can definitely get on your list if you go to South Texas and go to some of the places where they've been reported. And their song is very loud, clear whistles. Next up, we have the Audubon's Oriole. And this is a more yellow oriole that you can find in South Texas. They love hanging out in the brushy areas and adult males and females are similar. They're a yellowish green with a black head and throat. And their vocalization is really interesting because it almost sounds like a person whistling. Like you hear these faint little whistles and you're like, is somebody whistling at me? And then you realize that it's an Audubon's Oriole. But something interesting about them is that one of the places in South Texas, they actually had a hybrid. They named it Smudgy, and it kind of looked like a, a streak-backed Oriole, uh, which we'll get to in the vagrant section because it had like some smudging on the back. So you do get some interesting Oriole hybridizations. But Audubon's larger Oriole, yellowish green with distinctive black, kind of sounds like a human whistling. And number eight, we have the spot-breasted oriole. And this one is really interesting because they're not native to the United States, but they now have an established breeding population in Southern Florida. And this likely happened because of birds from the pet trade that got released at some point, and now you can just go to Florida and find breeding spot-breasted oriole. So it's really interesting. But they're native to Central America. They have an orange body with a black bib and some black spots on the chest. And it's really interesting to just go to some of the more urban areas because that's kind of where they live is just in these parks kind of by civilization and find these really beautiful um, tropical orioles hanging out in Florida. Their vocalizations are pretty loud, flute-like, and quite variable. So those are our widespread and localized oral species, but now we're going to talk about some of the vagrants. So some of the more rare species that you could find in the US. So we'll start off with our ninth oriole, the streak-backed oriole. They're a very rare visitor to Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona from Mexico. So I think of this as a very much a southeastern Arizona species, although they will show up in other places, but that's a big one that can show up as a vagrant there. Males are bright orange with black streaks on the back and a dark face. And the females are a little more paler orange and they do have some streaking, but it's a little more subdued. Now we're gonna get really into the weeds with some vagrants that you could possibly see in the US. But a lot of these birds are found in Mexico, Central America, so it'd be very rare for one to show up. We have 
the black vented Oriole. Males and females look similar with a black head, back and vent, and yellowish orange underparts. And as I said, it'd be very rare to see a black vented Oriole in the United States. Um, just like number 11, we have the orange Oriole, which can be found on the Yucatan Peninsula. Males have a bright orange yellow head, breast and rump, black back, face and throat, and females are a little more dull yellow orange with less extensive black. So this would be another super rare one. Kind of goes along with number 12 here, which is that there are many more possible Orioles that you could see as vagrants. So there's a lot of different species that live in Central America that it's possible they could make their way up to the United States, but it'd be very rare. So in general, we have our three widespread Orioles, our Baltimore, our Bullocks, and our Orchard. Then we have our more localized Orioles, and then we have a lot of options for vagrant birds. And Orioles love feeding on fruit, so a lot of people will put out orange slices for their Orioles. Sometimes they'll actually come to hummingbird nectar feeders to, to drink the nectar. And then some people also put out jelly for them. And jelly is controversial because sometimes uh, other birds can get stuck in the jelly. Like I've seen cases of hummingbirds getting it stuck all over their body and they have to get taken to a wildlife rehab center to get it taken off. So it's kind of controversial. I'm gonna let you do your own research as to if you think you wanna put out a jelly feeder or something like that, just make sure you're doing it in a way where other birds aren't gonna get stuck at it. I know people don't like having like the high fructose corn syrup in the jelly, so looking for certain ingredients, but do your own research on that and see if that's something you're interested in doing. And in addition to the fruit, nectar, jelly, Orioles also eat a lot of different insect species. But one cool thing is a lot of the birds uh, in the United States, they will make kind of those like hanging sack nests. So sometimes you'll see them after they're done being used and just be like, what is that up in the tree? Well, it was an Oriole nest at some point. So especially the Baltimores, I'll see kind of weaving these nests. And uh, it's neat because it looks different from most other bird species nests. You can just see them hanging off the tree. So that's a cool thing to look for. And those are the Orioles of the United States. I hope you found this video helpful. If you like it, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Let us know what other types of birds you would like us to cover. Make sure to check out our other educational content Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding.